Hello everybody and welcome to the ROS Industrial Microcourse. In this first chapter, the chapter zero, we are going to do a brief, a very brief introduction to the course. We are going to see what you are going to learn by doing this course, by completing this course. But first of all, what is ROS Industrial? ROS Industrial is mainly a project which goal is to bring ROS closer to the robotics industrial world. At this point, ROS is already a massive tool, used by thousands of roboticists all around the world. But the industrial sector has been somehow the hardest to access, and this is because they usually perform easy tasks, closed loop motions, and they don't need their robots to be very intelligent, they, they just do repetitive tasks. But lately, the industrial world has become more and more interested in performing more complex, more difficult tasks. And this is where ROS Industrial comes in handy. Because ROS Industrial provides tools to make those robots more intelligent. Plus, it is an open source project, which is very important because this means that anyone from particular users to universities to research labs, anyone can collaborate and can build code for these industrial robots. So at the end, the industrial sector will be very benefited by this. So let's see what you are going to learn with this course. Basically, you are going to learn three things. We are going to see an overview of how to create a basic URDF file for an industrial robot, some key concepts that you need to know. We are going to see how to create a movie package for an industrial robot and finally you are going to see how to perform motion planning with code. In this case we are going to be using Python. And how will you learn it? You will learn it by hands-on experience using simulations. The main core of this course is based on a Motoman SIA 10F simulation which is this one here. And finally, you are going to do a project using the UR5 robot. What do you say? Are you interested? Do you want to have a taste of what this course is going to teach you? Okay, then let's do this demonstration here. So, let's first of all execute this command here. Ross launch demo move it config. Demo planning execution dot launch. There it is. Now we are going to open the ROS graphical interface, the o graphical interface. There it is. And if we wait a little bit, here it will appear a window. Okay, as you can see it appears out of focus, but don't worry about that. You just have to execute this command here. And there it is. Let's maximize this. Great. Let's see. Now the next step will be to set the planning attempts. Okay, two, four. So let's go there to the planning tab, planning attempts, and let's set this to four. There it is. Great. Now, finally, we are going to execute this command here that will launch the demonstration itself. So, let's go. Great. Now, we can visualize in the Movie Tervis application the plan of the motion that the robot is going to do. As you can see, here it's showing us the plan of the motion. And in the simulation, it's going to perform this plan. Nice, right? And this will keep going, doing other motions. You will see now. There it is. It keeps performing different motions. Now it will rotate on its base. There it is. Now it should go back to the previous position. Let's see. There it is. Great. 
and finally it will return to the zero position, that one there, displayed in orange. There it is, perfect. So as you can see, through the movie Terrorist application we can visualize the plans that the robot is actually performing in the simulation or it is going to perform because we will visualize the plan obviously before the motion is executed right great so we are done with the demonstration let's stop this launch is here great so what are the minimum requirements for doing this course properly you need to have some basic ROS knowledge you also need to have some basic Python knowledge some basic Unix shell knowledge and finally some basic TF but more focused on joints and how joints work how you can interact with joints and finally before starting I would like to give special thanks to obviously the ROS Industrial Consortium and to the World ROS community for maintaining and for improving the ROS Industrial Project. So let's start with the course. I will go to the next unit which is the chapter one. And there it is. So chapter one is how to create an URDF for an industrial robot. Obviously, we are not going to explain the, all the steps of creating an URDF because that's a lot of work and it's not the purpose of this course. But we are going to see some key, some key parts that you have to take into account when you create an URDF robot, an URDF file for an industrial robot. So obviously, probably you all know what an URDF file is. Basically, basically, an URDF file is a file that describes a robot model. So this robot model you are visualizing here, it is described in an URDF file. For instance, let's do this first demonstration, which is the ROS run RVs, RVs. We are going to launch RVs. And we are going to be able to visualize it in the graphic tools we opened it before. There it is. So now here we can visualize this robot model, this URDF file at the end by adding the robot model display. And I'm also going to change here the fixed frame. There it is. So this robot you are able to visualize here is, this, is described in an URDF file. And what we are going to do in this first chapter is to build ourselves an URDF file for a robot like this one. So let's go. We are going to start with the exercise 1.1. I will do it with you. So first of all, we need to create a new package. So let's go to the source directory and create this package, which I'm going to call my robot description. There it is. Now you will see that it will appear here in the IDE. In a few seconds, there we have it. Great. So the next step is to create an URDF folder inside the, this package, so let's do that. And inside this folder I'm going to create a new file which I'm going to call my robot URDF. There it is. So I am actually following this exercise. I'm not doing anything special. So I'm going to first copy the basic structure of an URDF file with a robot tag. There we have it. Okay, so now we let's put something inside 
this URDF file and what we are going to put first are two links a world and a camera frame so let's do that there there it is great and next I'm going to add a table here there it is so I'm defining as you can see the visuals how it will look and the geometry which will be the same and finally let's also add a couple of joints one is to connect the world link which is the link that defines the the, the world where the simulation is to the table and another and another one to link the world to the camera and uh, that's it yeah we have the first part of our URDF built this is so we have basically created three links a world a camera and a table in fact we are not going to use in this course the camera but it is good to add it I think because it it doesn't affect in anything and usually when you build this kind of environments you want to add a camera frame for perception for be, for being able to visualize your environment what your robot is doing okay so that's it we have created a a link for the world a link for the camera frame and the link for the table and a couple of joints to connect the table and the camera to the world perfect so this is the basic structure but what about the robot okay let's go to add the robot but for that we need to introduce first chakra what is chakra chakra is a macro language which basically allows you to load your df contents in a very easy way in a very easy, easy and clean way this URDF file we have created here it's very simple but usually in the real world URDF files are, are very complex complex and have lots and lots of lines and with chakra we can add a portion a big portion of URDF by just adding a couple of lines to a URDF file you will see it uh, right now So by using Chakra, you can call a macro that will automatically load an URDF content into the URDF file where the macro is being called. And this is very interesting, but, but let's first go with the exercise because you will be able this way you will be able to see better how chakra work so what we are going to do first is to rename our URDF file which is this one to chakra so I'm going to rename this file am I going to name it chakra there it is perfect and now I'm going to include a chakra macro which is this one here Let's go there. Great, so what is this? This is basically a chakra macro file which contains a description of the SIA of the Motoman SIA 10F robot. And what I'm doing here is just including this file, but I'm not actually loading the robot yet. I'm just including this file. So next thing I will have to do is to actually call act Call activate the chakra macro just like this so as I said this this is the macro chakra file that inside contains the URDF code code for defining the CATNF the CATNF robot and here I'm including this file and here I'm actually 
calling it. So here I'm actually building the robot inside this URDF file. As you can see by just adding two lines. This is what makes Chakra so useful. And finally, I will just add a joint to connect this robot to the table we have created here. So let's do this. There it is. So as you can see, this joint is fixed and it connects the table to the base link of the robot, which is the base of the robot. Perfect. So let's go on with the tutorial. We have one more step, which is creating a launch file that we will create in order to visualize this robot. So let's first create the launch directory and inside here I will create a new file which I will call myrobot.launch and let's paste here this code <clears throat> which basically as you can see it's just loading the myrobot chakra which is the file we have here, the URDF we have created here loading this file into the parameter server into the robot description parameter and it will launch Irvis so we can visualize it so let's go and execute this file there it is ROS launch description my robot launch there it is great so let's go again to the graphical tools in order to see RVs. There we have it. Let's change this to the base link. And we will add the robot model. There it is. So this is the URDF file you have just created. As you can see you have the table, the very basic table, which is this one here. Look, there it is, this table here, 1 per 1 per 0 0.05, it's this white table you are seeing here, and the Motoman robot, which is connected through the base link to the table, and which we are loading here, in these two lines here, by using a Chakra macro. Perfect. As you can see here in RVs, you will get some TF errors. There it is, from the camera frame and from the table. Why do you think this is happening? Do you have a guess? Well, it is because building a, a, a full robot is more complex than this. In this case, we are not focusing on building the URDF, we are just doing some basic steps, but if you want to create a, a fully URDF file, you need to create the well. You need to publish the transforms, and in this case, we are not publishing any transform. So these transforms that are okay, they appear okay because they are already published by this simulation, which more or less it's the same that we are creating here in our chakra file. The only things that are different are the table, which in this case it's a more complex table, and the camera, of course, which in this case the simulation it doesn't have one. So that's why the camera frame and the table are showing a transform error, because we are not publishing the transforms. But this is not the aim of this course. So the aim of, the, the aim of this course and the aim of this chapter is to make you see some basic structures of a URDF file and how you can use Chakra to load not just this robot but any robot you could find any Chakra macro file for any robot and you can load it in your environment as easy as this and not just robot robots you could also load grippers you could change from a hand to 
to, to a gripper, for instance. You could load anything by using this method here, and your, your RDF file will keep easy and clean to read. So this is the power of Chakra, and this is one of the things we want you to, to see with these chapters, not how to publish TFs. We have another course for that, if you are interested in, in the Robotic Knight Academy, which is called TF Ross 101, and you can go and check it out. But but it's not, as I said, it's not the aim of this course. Great. So let's now just Great, so let's finally execute this command here in order to reset the robot's description parameter which we have changed it right now. And there it is, perfect. And that's all. That's all for this chapter, so let's move on. Now we have created our chakra file and now with this chakra file we are going to build a move it package where we will actually be able to perform motion planning so move it is basically a, a ROS framework that allows you to perform motion planning with a specific robot so it basically allows you to plan a, a movement from a point point A to a point B without colliding with anything and as you will see right now, Movit provides a very useful and user-friendly user interface which will make everything uh, much more easier. So let's go, let's create the Movit package and for that I'm going to follow this exercise 2.1 which has steps on what you have to do in every moment. Okay. So we already have the graphic tools opened. So let's execute this command here. Let's launch the Movit Setup Assistant, which will help us in the process of creating the package. There it is. So now, as I said, I'm, I will be doing everything in one time, but you have descriptions in the exercise of how to perform or how to execute each step so if you get lost you can come here check what each step means what are you doing you have everything here in the exercise but for doing it quicker I will do it like this so the first thing I'm going to do is to load the chakra of my robot, which is the one we've just created in the previous chapter. Here it is. So let's select it and load files. And our robot will appear here right now. And there it is. Our very simple table with the Mod1 robot. Great. So the first thing we are going to do is to generate the default collision matrix, which will define some pairs of joints which are always in collision, for instance the table with the base link, here you have it, base link table. These joints are always in collision, so when Movit performs collision checking, it checks if joints are going to collide with a specific motion. These ones are not checked, because they will be always in collision. Yes? The next, are, we are going to define a virtual joint, which we are going to call Fixed Base, which will basically define a joint which is connected to the world, to the simulation, and which is fixed, which will be the, the, the base of the robot. So let's click here and save. As you see, I've entered the name here, and I've put the parent frame name as Word. So let's save this. Perfect. Next step, we are going to create a planning group for what joints of the robot we want to perform motion planning. We are going to tell this to the movie package. So first of all, we are going to give a name to this planning group, which will be Manipulator, and we are going to select a kinematic solver, which will be the 
KDL Kinematics plugin. This one here. Great. And now we are going to select a kinematic chain which will compress the, the world robot. It will go from the base link. This is the first one you have to select. It will go from the base link, which is the base of the robot. Here now it has turned it to red. As you can see, when you select one, it turns red. Okay, so our planning group will go from the base link to the last joint, which is the link to zero. There it is, perfect. So we have defined the wall arm as a planning group, which will allow us to perform motion planning with the wall robotic arm. Great, so we are going to save now. Perfect, we are almost done. Now we are going to define a couple of, of predefined poses. For instance, this one, which has all the joints to zero, as you can see here, we can call it all zeros, save, perfect. So we have a predefined position, which is this one, which is all the joints to zero, and we are going to create another one which we are going to call home, for instance. And you can define it as you want. In my case, I'm going to define it like this. There it is. Just putting the joint L and joint U to 1.5 instead of 0. And I'm going to call this position home. So I'm going to save. Great. Finally, we are not going to add for this tutorial because it's a very basic tutorial we are not going to add any end effect or passive joints we are just going to add uh, author information you can put whatever you want here but it is required you cannot escape this this step for instance i'm going to put to at test.com great and finally, I'm going to build the package. So for that, I'm going to browse here. Let's go to the source directory. And here I'm going to create a new directory, which I will call my robot move it config. You have to put move it config, but the first word it can be whatever you want. But this you it has to and with move it underscore config yes in my case i'm going to do it like this my robot move it config oh i have a typo here let's config no it's config there it is my robot move it config great so we click choose and generate package yes i don't want any end vector so okay and there it is the package has been created, configuration package generated successfully. So let's exit the setup assistant. And as you can see here, it appears our package with a config and the launch directory, with some configuration files and some launch files as well. So what we're going to do now is to test this package. And for that, we are going to be doing the exercise 2.2. .2. So let's execute this demo.launch file, which you can see it here, which will launch the environment, my roadway config, demo.launch, there it is, let's launch this, perfect. So now it may happen again that in the graphic tools, the window appears out of focus, let's see, if, that, if that's the case, you'll have to execute this command here, yeah, there it is, it's just out of focus. So I will execute this command here. And now I can maximize this. Perfect. So here we have the move it Ervis environment. Here, here we will be able to perform motion planning. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, let's follow the exercise. You don't miss any step. Okay, so 
the first thing we're going to do is to move to the planning tab okay yes so we are here in the planning tab as you can see and this is a a recommended behavior before starting to do anything it is good to update the start state yes to avoid any kind of error so I will update my start state and then I can go to the goal state yes as you can see here is the start state and here the goal state so I can move to the goal state and okay I'm going to execute a random valid yes as you can see here you have many options to select random valid random current same as a start and here we have the two predefined positions we created when we were building the movie package you remember the old zeros which is this one and the home which in my case I put it a couple of joints to a different value okay so what we are going to do first is to choose a random valid and click in update here as you can see the robot chooses a random valid position to move and it moves here but the robot hasn't actually moved yes so now I can click here on the plan button and the robot will show me a plan to go there yes so let's do that I click the plan button and as you can see I can visualize here the plan what plan has move it calculated for going to that pose yes okay perfect there it is it shows me the plan okay yeah so when i have the plan if i'm all right with it i can click the execute trajectory and the robot actually moves there but it's it moves there in the movie derby so movie derby has an internal simulation simulator which is this one and it executes the trajectory here in the internal simulator in move it in the movie environment but in the current simulation in the actual simulation the robot still doesn't move yes we will see how to move the robot in the simulation later but you have to keep this in mind so despite you are executing the trajectory and the robot is actually moving now it is moving in move it in, in the move interface environment not in the simulation yes all right great so yeah now i just recommend you to play a little bit with this tool to see what what you can do for instance i can choose the all zeros position here and if I update, you will see that the robot goes to the all zero position, which is this one. I can plan now how to go to the all zero position. I can execute it. There it is. I can choose, for instance, the home, the pose I have defined as home, which is this one. I can also calculate a plan to go there there you have it you can execute this plan perfect you can also check here some of the options you have in the displays to see what 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 it does wherever so just play a little bit with the tool investigate and and, and get a little bit familiar with it yes great So when you are done with this, we are going to see how to actually move the robot in the simulation. So how can we connect the move it environment to the current simulation? Yes, which in this case, it's like connecting the move it environment to the real robot. So in order to do that, we will have to do a, a few steps, yes, which are divided here in the exercise 2.3 so let's go for it and the first thing 
we are going to do, you will need to do is to add a file here, which is called controllers. Let's create a new file, which will be called controllers.yaml. There it is. And here I'm going to paste this code here. There it is. So here, what I'm basically doing is to connect move it with the actual robot of the simulation. So if I come to the simulation here and I do a ROS topic list, you will see that we have a couple of topics. Here we have the TF topic, for instance. Okay, we have also the movie topic, so I will just a moment stop move it. Great. Now we will be able to see this better. So if we do now our ROS topic list here, we'll see the topics of the simulation. You can see here the TF topic, where it publishes the transforms, the joint states topic. And here we have the joint trajectory controller. And more importantly, we have these topics here. Yes which is an action server, which is the joint trajectory controller action server. You can see this because it has topics and that in cancel feedback, goal, status, and, and result. This tells you that this is an action server. And this is specifically the joint trajectory controller follow joint trajectory action server. So what we are doing here is to connect our move it package with this action server, with the action server that controls the joints in the simulation, which as you can see, it's called C at an F, joint trajectory controller, and the namespace of the action is follow joint trajectory. Yes, C at an F, joint tra trajectory controller, follow joint trajectory. Here you have it. Then here we are just specifying the, the type of message that this action uses, which is a follow joint trajectory message and finally we define which joints you are going to control with this action server which are these ones here yes great so the next step yeah here we have obviously the explanation perfect so the next step will be to create another file in the config directory which will be called joint names.yam and in here we are just going to define the names of the joints here you have it control joint names and we put here the names of the joints which are the same that we put here in the controllers yam file right so here we are just defining the, as, as the file name says, the, the names of the joint of the robot. Yes. Perfect. Then now we are going to modify an existing launch file. So if we come here to the launch files that Movit has created for us, you will see that you have one that is called my robot in my case, because the robot is called my robot, but in your case, it can be another thing. So whatever underscore move it controller manager launch XML. And if you open this file, you will see that it is empty. So we are going to fulfill it with this here. There it is. Perfect. So here we are just, as you can see, loading to the ROS parameter server, we are loading our controllers yam file. This file we have created here, we are loading it into the parameter server of ROS. And we are defining uh, some parameters like uh, the use controller manager to false, the duration monitoring to false as well, and we are defining the move it simple controller manager plugin. This will be the plugin that will connect move it with the simulation, with the controller manager of the simulation, which is, the controller manager is 
is the tool that controls the joints of the real simulation. So this Move It Simple Controller Manager plugin, yes, will be the one that connects, that actually connects Move It with the simulation. Perfect. So we are almost done. We just need to create a last launch file, which is this one. So we are going to create it. Here it is the name. You can name it whatever, but the the usual way to name this file is whatever planning execution. In my case, it's I will name it my robot planning execu execution, but you could call it like you want. But it is recommended to end it with planning underscore execution dot launch, right? So let's create this file. Robot underscore planning underscore execution dot launch. There it is. Perfect. And we are just going to copy and paste this piece of code here. There we are. Perfect. So what are we doing here? We are, as you can see, we are loading again the join names file which we created here. We are loading it also to the parameter server. We are also launching some launch files that the move it needs. Yes, like the planning context. We are also launching the move group and the move it service. You can check them if you want. These are default launch files that has been created. You can see here the move it service. The move group is right here. Yes, these are launch files that have been created by default when you have built the move it package. Yes, so you can check them if you want. But here, let's focus on this section of the launch file, which is probably the most important here. So here, what we are doing is to launch the joint state publisher node. Yes. And this node, what does is to tell the state of the node, of the, of the joint, as, as the name says, joint state publisher. Yes. And here we need to put into this source list parameter the name of the topic of the simulation that has this information, which in the case of our simulation is the CTNF joint states. So if you remember here, when we did the ROS topic list, here we have the topic. This topic is typically called joint states. Sometimes it has a, a, a namespace before, in this case it's CTNF, it can have a namespace of another robot, but it will always end with joint states. And this is the topic where the information of the states of the joints is. So we need to tell move it what are the states of the joints in the real simulation, of course. And this is what we are doing here. Yes, we are telling to move it where it can check the states of the joints of the simulation. So this is very important. Perfect. So yeah, I think we have it. So yeah, let's test it. Let's launch this planning execution launch file we have created here. This one here. Yes, which is in my case, it's the world's launch my robot with config my robot planning execution here it is so let's execute this perfect and again if it appears out of focus i will execute this command here there it is let's go back okay I'm going to execute here in order to visualize this move it environment. Perfect, there it is. So now let's repeat what, what, what we have done in the previous exercise, but you will see a little change. So let's update the current start state. So there are robot nodes where it starts, perfect. 
And for instance, I'm going to plan to the home position. Let's plan this trajectory, this motion. There it is. Now, if we click the execute trajectory, it will actually execute the trajectory in the simulation because we have modified our package so it can connect with a real simulation, with a real robot, let's say. Yes. So if I execute this trajectory, there it is. So you can see it executes this trajectory in the simulation. Let's repeat it. Let's go now to, to the old zeros position. There it is. Let's update the scene. Plan now to this new goal. There it is. And execute it again and as you can see it executes now it executes the trajectory in the simulation which at the end is what everybody wants so this is a very useful tool but at the end you will always want to move uh, a real robot or a simulated robot right perfect Perfect. So yeah, we have finished it with the second chapter. I've gone fast, but if you want to see it and read it all with more detail, you have the notebooks where everything is very well explained. Yes. Okay, so perfect. Let's move to the third unit, to the third chapter. And there it is. So in this third chapter, we are going to see how to perform motion planning with Python, with code. So in the previous chapter, we saw how to perform motion planning with, with Moveit. Yes, we were planning and we were doing everything with the Moveit environment. But now we are going to see how we can do this through code, which is also very interesting. Yes, in this case, we are doing it with Python, but lots of times, this will be done with CPP, but for educational purposes, I think it's better to do it with Python because it will be more clear. Yes. So let's go. Let's start with this first demonstration here. So we will launch again the movie environment. There we are. Great. And now what we are going to do is to, okay, yeah. First of all, I'm going to repeat this command here. There we are, perfect. So now I launch this, but I'm not going to touch at all the movie environment. I'm going to do everything through code, yes? So for this first demo, let's execute this piece of Python code here. You can execute it either by pressing in your keyboard Shift plus Enter at the same time, or you can also play, click this play button here. It says run cell. Yeah, so this cell, I know now it is selected because it's green. It has a, a green border, as you can see. Yes, there it is. This cell is selected now. So let's click the play button and go to the move it environment. Let's see what happens here. And there it is. You have to wait a few seconds. Yeah. Until it executes the world code. There are some slips here as you can see so there it is it is doing a plan and what plan it is doing why it is planning something okay let's let's see what is going on here okay 
Yeah, here we have a, a syntax warning which tells to the queue size. Yeah, but this, well, it doesn't matter. You can define here in the publisher the, the queue size, but you can, if you don't want to, you can simply don't, don't define it. And it will print a, a warning, but it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about this. Okay, so what is this code doing? Let's let's have a look. So we are doing some 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 imports here, as you can see. Basically, the important ones here. So we are importing the move it commander tool. Yes, we are also importing the move it messages because we will be using them, and the geometry messages. Yes, for this pose message here. Great, then here we are initializing the move it commander, yes, which will allow us to send through Python, through Python commands to move it. This will allow us to communicate with move it through Python. So here we are initializing the move it commander, we are initializing a node, as always in Gross. Then here we are defining the robot, as you can see here through the move it commander and the robot commander function. Then we define as well the scene and we also define the planning group. Do you remember when we were building the move it package? We created a, the manipulator planning group, yes, so now here we are initializing it, so we can use it, we can send comments to it, we can communicate with it, yes, and then finally here we are creating a publisher that will publish into this topic the plans, so this is why we are being able to visualize here the plan, yes, because the plan is being published by this publisher into this topic. Yes, so this is why we are being able to visualize here the, the, the motion plan. Perfect. Then here, we are just defining a, a post variable. This post target contains a, an instance of a post message. Yes, you can, if you want, for instance, you can check here how a post message looks. If you do a ROS message show post, there it is. You can see here the structure of, of a post message. Yes, it has the position, orientation. In the position you have X, Y, Z, and in the orientation you have X, Y, Z, and W. Yes. So, what's going on here? Let's go back to our code. Okay, so now, once we have created an instance of the message, we are assigning values, concrete values. So for instance, to the orientation in W, we are giving a value of 1. To the position in X, we are giving a value of 0 0.3, to Y, 0, and to the position in Z, 1.1. .1. So this, all these values define a pose. Yes, a pose in the space. It defines a, a pose in the space. Yes, in this case, it's here, right here, uh, where where the end if where the end effector ends. The end effector is the. In this case, we don't have a, a a hand or a gripper or anything, so the end effector is this last joint here. So when where it ends. In the trajectory. This is the pose we have defined it here. And then we are from the group we have created here, which is the manipulator group, we are setting this pose as a target. Yes, as a goal pose, as, a, as, as the pose that the road wants to go to. Then finally, we plan. We call the plan function so that the robot plans how it can go there. Yes, and in this case, the plan to order is this one. 
Yes? It's quite easy, don't you think so? Quite self-explanatory. Okay. Perfect. Then at the end, of course, we, we shut down the movie commander. We shut it off. Okay. Okay, so let's move on with the with the chapter. So we have seen here how we can plan a trajectory by using a, a pose, by defining a goal pose, a target pose, yes? But this is not the only way we can do this. So, okay, perfect. Yeah, here you have as well the, the, the code, explain it line, line by line, yes? So you can have a look here if you want to see specifically what each line does. Perfect. Yeah, you can see here a, a post message, a structure. Perfect. Yeah, so here you also have an exercise where here this was just a demonstration. You didn't have to do anything. You just executed the code by pressing, by clicking this play button, but you didn't have to, to do anything. So here in the, in the exercise, you should create a package and inside that package, create a launch file which launches a script that contains a code like this one. But you can try, I don't know, you can try putting a different pose to see what happens. You can do your own test, but with a package. So writing the code into a file and then you, you, you will be able to modify it as you please. Because here you cannot modify this. This you just can execute it, but you, can, you cannot modify it. You cannot play with it. Yes, so this is the purpose of the exercise 3.1 here. Great. So, as, as I've said before, we have seen how to plan a trajectory by setting a, a, a pose, a goal pose, a target pose, yes? But we can also plan a trajectory by giving values to joints. Yes? So let's see. Now this example here, but before that I'm going to restart everything. Okay, let's stop here. Um, with the release and let's launch it again. Perfect. So I'm sure that everything starts from zero. Perfect, so let's, all right. Let's move again this. Perfect. Now I will also uh, register the demo. It's right here. I will also click the restart kernel in order to restart the, the notebook because it may happen that some processes of the code you've executed before this code still remain there. So just for safety, let's restart the kernel, which is done by hitting into this, this button here. So let's restart the kernel. Perfect. And now let's execute this other code here. Yes, the one in the demo 3.2. So let's execute this code here. Let's go and let's see what happens now in the movie service environment. Let's wait a few seconds. There we are. Great. So as you can see, it is showing me another plan. Yes? So you may think, okay, but this is more or less the same I, uh, I saw before, right? But it's not because now we are planning in a very different way. So let's check this code here. So here, in this case, we are planning by using joint values. We are planning in the joint space, yes? So all these parts of the, of the code is the same as before, because here we are just initializing the environment. We are just initializing uh, the robot, the scene, the, the group, the manipulator group the publisher to, to visualize the trajectory. Yes, so all this is the same, but here 
as you can see, it's different. Yes, here the, the, the plan function is also the same, but here it's different. So what am I doing here in these three lines, which are the key of this code? So first of all, I'm calling the get current joint values function, which will give me the current values of the joints. Where are the joints? Yes, uh, are all the joint values to zero, which would be this initial position where all the joints are to zero? Yes, I'm getting this information. Yes, and then right here, when I have in this variable the values of the joints, I, as you can see, I modify the value of one of them. In this case, the, the third joint. Well, it will be four because it starts from zero. So it will be zero, one, two, three. So I'm modifying the value of the third joint and I'm putting it to one dot five. So all the joints will be to zero. Yes, because it starts from this position where all the joints are to zero. But this joint here, the one which is in the fourth position, will have a value to 1.5 and this causes the robot to perform this motion. Yes? This is why I'm seeing this plan. Because I'm modifying the value of one of the joints to 1.5. And in this case I'm just modifying one, but you could modify two, three, whatever you want. Yes? And it's as easy as this. Yes? You get the values of the joints, you modify the joints you want to modify, and finally you set these, these new values of the joints as a target, as you can see. And then you just call the plan function, as you did before, in order to, to plan this motion. Yes? Great. So again you will have here an explanation of, of, of the code, yeah, line by line. And an exercise where you will have to create a package, build, copy this code and, and do your tests, modify it, put other values, modify other joints, whatever you want. Yes, but in your package and with your code. Because here you, you won't be able to modify nothing. This is just a demonstration to see how it works. Perfect. So let's again stop this. There we are. Great. So after this, you are going to see also some some functions that may be useful to you, to to you in order to get uh, interesting data, useful data. Yes. So for instance, you can get uh, I don't know the, the the planning frame here. You can get the the end effector link. Yes. The name of the end effector of of a group. Here you can group. You can get the, the different groups that your robot has. In this case, in our case, our robot just has one group, which is called manipulator. Do you remember which you created in the uh, in the second chapter when you were building the boot package? But it may happen that robots have more than one group. Here you also have the the get current and values function, which we saw right in the previous uh, demonstration. You can also, of course, get the current pose. So as well as you can get the, the joint values, you can also get the current pose. And finally, there's a function to get the, the current state, which is a general state of the robot. Yes. So this is just uh, in order to get information. You won't be doing anything. You won't be planning anything, executing anything in the robot. This is just to get information that it may be useful for, for other stuff. Yes. So again, you will have also, also a, an exercise here to test this, to create a package, to test how this works, to get uh, the current job values, current posts, whatever you want. Yes. And then, at the end, we are going to see how to execute a trajectory as well with code. Which you will see it's very easy. So we have seen how we can plan a trajectory by using uh, poses, how we can plan a trajectory by using joint values. 
but how can we execute then this trajectory? So as you can see, it's as easy as this. If you want to plan a trajectory, for instance, in, in this code here, you will do all this, but for instance here, you can substitute or you can just add it below this one and you will plan and execute or you, or you can remove the plan because you know how the plan is, you have visualized it before and you can just modify this and instead of planning you would add this line this line here, right? group go so instead of group dot plan it will be group dot go and the wait to true yes? so it is as easy as this very very easy, right? okay so again you will have a final exercise, this 3.4 where you will have to create a code to to plan a trajectory, to move the robot, you can do it either with joints, either with poses you can do one with poses and one with joints whatever you want, but at the end of the code you have to move the robot, not, not just visualize the plan, but you have to move the robot in the way that it is explained here you will see how the robot executes that trajectory and finally you will have another, another exercise which is quite easy, I think which is to concatenate various plans or various trajectories, yes? So, so until now you have seen a plan of one trajectory, one movement, one motion, yes? But of course you can concatenate, you can do one motion, then do another one, then do another one, yes? And this is, this is very common to do in real environments and with the information you have at this point, you should be able to do it okay, so you will have this final exercise and you will see, it will look something like this yes? so as you can see it starts from the old zeros it goes down here, one motion, second motion, it is here, it's moving another joint and the third motion is to go again up, yes? so here it is concatenating various motion and this will be the final exercise of this chapter yes and after this all the, the let's say the main core of the course will be covered so the only thing you will have to do after this will be to complete the project so with all the knowledge you have you will have to put it all together in this final project Yes, which is this unit 5. And of course, we will change the simulation. Because if not, you will already have it all done. Yes? So we, you, you will have to test all you have known, all you have learned in a new simulation, which is this simulation, the UR5 simulation. The one you saw in the demo, in the first demo of the course. Yes? And what you will have to do with this project is just the same you have done during the course so it will be divided in, in, in some steps as you can see the first one is build the URDF build a URDF for this robot you have here some tips on how to, how to do it, how to check this then the second step will be to build them with the package which you have already done as well with the with the Motoman simulation, with the CATNF simulation. Yes. And in this case you will have to do it for the URDF you have built here for this robot. The third step will be to connect the move it package with the simulation, which also you already know how to do. And finally you have to create a Python script in order to do some motions which are described here yes here you can see also you have examples of what you should see in each step yes here you have an example of how the final script you write should do with your robot yes 
And that's all. Congratulations. You have completed the Ross Industrial 101, the Ross Industrial micro course. So I hope you've enjoyed this course. You have learned it a lot. And I hope to see you very soon in other courses. So keep pushing and keep learning Ross.